Welcome to another Sigma Life Hangout. Today we're discussing on the hopes that are being built over the solution of the Cypriot problem. With, uh, we have with us Assistant Professor Yorgos Kendas. Hello, welcome. Thank you for having me. So what do you think? Will we have a solution plan within a year, 2016? Of course, this is the one million dollars question. <laughs> uh, no one can tell. Uh, the recent discussion over the uh, possibility of, of a swift agreement, uh, although reality is on the table, uh, cannot uh, help us to be so optimist on such an outcome. Uh, it remains to be seen whether things will develop towards that direction. Uh, but uh, I, 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 want, I don't want to be optimist or pessimist. I, I want to be pragmatist. And uh, we have to look into the elements uh, of, of negotiation, uh, the themes of negotiation. And um, to my understanding, there is some progress, but not enough progress to call uh, for um, an agreement, a package agreement over the, the whole Cyprus problem uh, within a few months. But your answer goes, touches upon two different spectrums, because we have on one side the peoples, the bo both uh, communities that feel that it's time that we are ready to reach a solution, we're ready to take a step backwards in order to move our country forward. And that's the people's feeling. And then you have, um, on the high political level, we have the President of the Republic and the Turkish Cypriot leader that seem to be ready to follow the people's will. But then again, we have realities being pragmatists, as you put it. Things are not moving as much as one would have expected, taking in consideration both aspects of political will willness. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you're right. Uh, taking people to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, people always have a wish, Cypriots, for, mm -hmm. for settlement. Although they went through a lot of uh, regrets for, having, for being optimists, for having um, hopes and let them down in the end. Uh, so that's one aspect. Um, at the same time, we have to look into uh, the reality that not all Cypriots are that optimist with regard to the prospect of, of a settlement. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that uh, this optimist story begins with uh, the, the prevalence of Mr. Akiji in the Turkish Cypriot community. And there were some expectations that he will be different from other Turkish Cypriot leaders, and he will negotiate in a different manner. Expectations that were be, uh, that had been built up when uh, Talat was in the leadership of the Turkish Cypriot community as well. Yes. So w we've seen that again. Though some say that Akiji is different than Talat, and maybe uh, different than all other Turkish Cypriot uh, leaders. Uh, but it remains to be seen whether he will put on the table some different views on, on certain issues, taking, for instance, the property, mm -hmm. property issues. So we've seen through leakages to the media that the, the, uh, what the propositions of the Turkish Cypriot community are more or less alike, similar with propositions put on the table by the previous Turkish Cypriot uh, leader. Uh, for example, Turkey Cypriots want the Greek Cypriots to compensate refugees, and they want that compensation to come from the Greek Cypriot uh, constituent state. Mm -hmm. So uh, to Greek Cypriots, th this is not acceptable. So we have a lot of issues um, to discuss over the property um, mm -hmm. uh, theme on negotiations. It seems that there is not that optimism anymore on, on, on that dimension. Um, on the other hand, uh, it seems that uh, the decision now is to is to put to, to put aside uh, the property issue and focus on other dimensions of the Cyprus problem. So what I see is that uh, in October we will see, you know, some um, overall discussions over different aspects of the Cyprus problem, uh, and the reason is that we have to wait and see what's going to happen in, in Turkey. They have elections in November the first. Mm -hmm. So um, to my knowledge. What Ankara told Akiji is to uh, not move ahead before the elections in Turkey. So I, I think being pragmatist, uh, what, what I said, that I, I try to be pragmatist and not optimist or pessimist, is that um, 
in my view, uh, Greek Cypriots are not negotiating with the Turkish Cypriot uh, leader. Uh, they negotiate via the Turkish Cypriot leader with Ankara. Mm -hmm. uh, the, major, the major aspects of the Cyprus problem are de dealt with, not in, in Nicosia, but in Ankara uh, with regard to mm -hmm. uh, the Turkish Cypriot community. With the Greek Cypriot community within the Republic, we keep saying that the key for the solution is in Ankara. And that, have it, having said that, we do believe that because Ankara has proven that it had set um, obstacles in other procedures mm -hmm. over the years. However, Akinji showed that at least in the first month, when months when he was just elected, he showed that he was ready to confront the Turkish leadership, the Turkish government, and say, mm -hmm. leave us alone, we're ready to stand on our own two feet, we know how to solve the problem, mm -hmm. we know how to work around things. Do you think that was a firework that was just an instant and not something that we could put our money on? No, no, you're right. Uh, there are a couple of things to look in, in, into that. Uh, first of all, uh, it is true that uh, some people in the Turkish Cypriot community are fed up with Turkey mm -hmm. because Turkey intervenes in their domestic affairs and calls the short shots in all, in all dimensions of the Turkish Cypriot's life. Uh, at the same time, Turkish Cypriots are quite uneasy with, with settlers, uh, which is the, 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 the majority of the population mm -hmm. in, in, in occupied it Cyprus in, 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 in the, the north. So uh, Akinji said, sent a message to Ankara that, you know, I want to rule here. But on the other hand, Akinji knows that without Ankara's support, financial support, he cannot run his so-called administration. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think that uh, Akinji found or reached a new momentum with, uh, with Ankara. A and, and we see that unfolding in, in, in negotiations. Uh, he's very careful not to take bold steps in negotiations. He's very careful in, in what he's talking about in negotiations. On the other hand, when it comes to rhetoric, he's different. Mm -hmm. But you know, there is a gap to bridge between rhetoric and reality. And I think for the time being, this is unbridgeable. Um, to uh, explain that, we see a Kenji talking a lot, but not walking the walk. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, I think that when it comes to communication strategy, uh, I think I can be successful in talking in public, but when things go more more deeper in negotiations and when we'll see more and more of what Turkey Cyprus put on the table, uh, we may, uh, I think we may see some different moods within the public. So um, maybe uh, that overall optimism uh, may strike back. And when it strikes back, we're gonna see, you know, exactly the opposite uh, mood uh, across the the public in, mm -hmm. in the Greek Cypriot community. So you think Akinji had said that he wants a solution package being put forward to the people before the elections, the parliamentary elections in uh, in the Republic of Cyprus um, f the following year, in a few months, 2016. Mm -hmm. But then you said again that he wants to postpone everything until the Turkish elections, mm -hmm. November 1st, that give us a, a, window, a, an op a window of opportunity of about four to five months. That seems it can't be done. Mm -hmm. Within four or five months, you cannot have a full package being put forward to the people. However, the optimism is there among people that have been quite vocal mm -hmm. about the Cypriot problem. And those people usually say, we know something good is happening because we see the two leaders traveling around in Brussels, in the US, in the UK, uh, talking with Turkey and Greece, which are all members and parties of the solution, or if not the problem. And they leave out, they leak out the notion that maybe something is already done, mm -hmm. maybe something has been prepared, and they're just working out the details. Maybe we have found common grounds on more topics than we know, mm -hmm. we being the public, and they left the difficult chapters, as you said, property issue, and they're working on it right now and they're looking to the great powers or those that could be part of the solution to give them solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that might be the case? 
uh, this is possible you know there are always things that may happen we don't know uh, that, that's, that's I feel that you're answering to me as if I just put forward a, con a conspiracy theory. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not saying that. But, but of course, we cannot know everything that's happening mm -hmm. uh, in negotiations. That's that's uh, normal. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I, I think it's, it's high time for for politicians to be transparent with the public, because uh, we have the experience of 2004, actually of 2002 when the Annan plan was put on the table. Mm -hmm. And people were disappointed because uh, they, they've seen something that uh, they did not expect to see. So if the public is not prepared to see what is you know, negotiated, then we're going to have some reaction. So that's number one. Uh, I think number two is, is that uh, we have to be very careful with, with what some say, you know, political psychology. It's one thing to see the leaders, you know, walking in Lidra or you know, going together to theater, <laughs> or having that social engagement mm -hmm. and uh, interaction, uh, which creates, you know, a good uh, environment. Uh, but uh, this does not matter when it comes to, you know, tough stuff in, in, in negotiations. Uh, take, for instance, the CBMs, the Confidence mm -hmm. Building Measures. Measures. Uh, they have agreed back in May a catalog of five. They implemented just one, uh, which is the composition of, of, of a bicommunal committee, committee on, on gender issues. Mm -hmm. But all other aspects, opening new uh, crossing points, uh, the issue of uh, electricity, um, telecommunication, and, uh, and there was another one that concerns uh, radio. Um, and telecommunications being together yes, working. Okay. So, um, so no progress. There, there, there is discussion that as I've heard, uh, I was briefed recently by uh, someone who participates in a committee and, and he told me that, uh, that the Turks do not step back from initial positions. Um, but nevertheless, so uh, what I try to say, the argument I try to make here is that it's one thing to talk in public and quite another thing to implement what is announced. So, so far we've seen very little and people expect much more. Uh, we have to wait and see what's going to happen in the coming months. Uh, and and I, I want to reiterate that, uh, that we have to wait and see what's going to happen in Turkey. Because if instability um, continues in Turkey, I think this will have an impact, a very serious impact on negotiations uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So what worries me more is whether at the end of this attempt we're going to have a solution or another stalemate. So l let's take the possibility of a stalemate, which is a possibility that very few people talk about. I, I wonder whether the status quo in Cyprus would be the same the day after a new stalemate or would change. And who will be benefited by such a development? So I think that and, and I, I want to call on, 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 on Greek Cypriot's uh, consciousness and, of course, of the international uh, community consciousness that in case that things develop on the ground to a direction that the incentives from Turkey Cypriots will be uh, minimized. Uh, and I'm saying that when the status quo changes into a direction that the Turkey Cypriot will think that they are closer to have their own state, mm -hmm. then they, they will have less and less incentives to come to a compromise. So people have to be very careful uh, on what they do as, as an attempt to ease uh, negotiations. So summing up, optimism is not that justified as people might think or politicians might put forward. You say that we need to be pragmatist, see things on the table and read them as they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, this, this is what I think. I think we have to be patient. We have to look into developments as they happen, not as we wish them to happen. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we will be here to talk about the result. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And thank you for watching.